Okay, YouTubers, it's Midwestville here again, and today I'm reviewing the Old Town Sportsman 120 PDL kayak. And there's a couple of interesting things I want to show you on this kayak, so we'll go ahead and get right to it here. I'll turn the camera around, and you can watch while I talk. Hello, Alan, how you doing, buddy? Good, that's good, that's cool. Okay. The first thing I want to show you is that uh, we installed a sea tug or purchased a sea tug for it and the sea tug had to be modified to sit squarely on this hull because this hull varies from front to back. It's got a heavy skeg in front which keeps this kayak running straight when you pedal it. It drops off and then it continues on from here all the way back. And between the skeg, the dual pontoon setup, and the rudder, when you pedal this kayak, it doesn't twitch or move at all. It just goes in a straight line. But because of the shape of the hull, because it's different from front to back, the sea tug, no matter which way you placed the paddles on it, wouldn't fit. So I'll put up some pictures of the modifications that I made for it. It's really simple modifications. They won't cost you two bucks. So anyways, I set it up on this other small cart here so that you'd be able to get a better view of this whole thing. The other thing is, after I'd had it out a couple of times, I noticed that it needed seat risers. And the reason why it needed these seat risers was pretty simple. Uh, it was too reclined and because it's so reclined on a heavy person like myself because Of the position of the seat when I'm in it, which is up here between four and five I would have to look down below and over this really thick life jacket And because I was so far reclined back I couldn't see what I was doing to tighten up this lock nut down here or to even uh, lift up the drive or yeah, it was hard to get in and out of that seat. Very hard to get out of the seat. So I'm going to recommend that when you, if you're a big person like me, I weigh 240 to 250 pounds most of the time. I'm six foot tall. I have massive legs. And I'm going to recommend that if somebody of my size and girth gets in one of these things, that they have the seat all the way back. The drive will have to be up, of course. And have your seat jacket either on the seat or back behind the seat like this ready to go don't put it on before you get on the kayak at the shoreline you're not going to need it right there what you're going to need is all the deck space you can get so that when you sit down in this seat you can reach forward pull your drive down into your you know deeper water adjust your seat forward reach behind grab your life jacket then put your life jacket on and sit down I'm going to put up some photos of uh, these risers up close. A uh, quick description is they're just made out of aluminum sheet metal that I got from an old aluminum sign. They're covered with a polyester fabric that uh, I was able to scavenger from something that was being used as a carrying strap. And they're glued to the styrofoam blocks, which is down here. There's two one-inch blocks glued together for a total of two-inch height. And then they're covered with that polyester cloth using uh, polyurethane glue. If you use anything else, you will melt the, uh, you will melt the foam blocks. Okay, so, so much for that. The reason why for the sea tug is simple. When you take that seat tug apart, it comes apart very quickly. You can drop the wheels off of it, unsnap the paddles, and it'll fall right into there. So you can make one trip down the ramp if you want or one trip to the shoreline, and you're done. Okay, the next thing that we did was purchased uh, the life jacket. I didn't need a fishing life jacket with a tackle box on the front of my already too big belly. So I bought an NRS. Turns out 
The reason why I wanted this one was because it's real thin in the back. You don't even you don't even feel the back of the seat when you have it on. Problem is, it's extremely thick in the front. So, like I said, if your seat's reclined, you won't be able to see your feet. Uh, it's, 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 you can cast easily with it. You can paddle easily with it. But if your hands are in front of it, like when you're retrieving, uh, you might notice all that extra bulk up front. So that's something to be aware of. I think it's a lot better than having a big old cushion behind your neck, though, hanging down above this seat right here. So I think it... I didn't want that so I got this and when you get this you get you get all that extra thickness the thing I like about the seat tug is the strap it's really easy to uh, tighten up all you have to do is pull on it and it'll go tight that's all there is to it it just goes through the bottom and up through the teeth and you just pull on it it's tight that's all there is to it, it stays on now that I've modified it and like I said I'll put some pictures up of the modifications I'll put them up a couple times throughout the video. The other thing is the paddle. Uh, very light paddle. It's a fiberglass paddle. It only weighs a little over two pounds. Much, much better than an aluminum shaft paddle, which weighs twice that. What I want you to know, though, is when you go to the lake to have it, the blades turned so that they're facing this way. Because if they're facing the other way, they'll hook on the dock, they'll hook on anything that you might be up against. So turn a, turn the paddle so it's the curve goes towards the canoe. And uh, I haven't noticed any issues at all with the drive, other than it's a little bit tight. It's sort of like pedaling a bike with a on a very slight incline. Uh, you know, I'm 69 years old. I'm not in too bad a shape, but I'm not in the best of shape. So, I don't know. After about an hour and a half of pedaling, I got a good workout. And actually, the temperature outside was in the 40s, and I wasn't cold. So, you know, I used to sit in my 19-foot bass boat and be out in weather like this and just be too cold and uncomfortable I'd want to go home but in this thing I want to stay out on the lake the other thing is expect some damage if you get this through a, a uh, supplier in other words somebody who has shipped it from Old Town to one of their distribution warehouses and then send it from there to an, uh, your point of pickup and as you can see it's got scuffs all over it it had uh, some deep scratches in it, especially on the bottom of the hole. I accepted it anyway. It had gotten punched right in here, which I repaired that. It didn't go all the way through the hole, but I used a little epoxy, which isn't supposed to stick, but somehow I got it to work out, and you can't even tell there was anything there, mostly because of the multicolors of this canoe. I hit it with a little black after I had... Uh, sandpapered it and, and I hit it with a, an orbital uh, paint corrector too a garage paint corrector smoothed it all off and then I hit it with a little white because there's a, a white flex all the way through this the other thing was I added this Scotty rod holder which came with a six inch track which was at no extra charge and the reason why you're going to need that is because you're going to want a place to put your, if you're a bass fishing especially, a place to put your rod down quickly if you need to. You do have this back here, this rod holder back here. You have another one back here. You can put six on this wilderness tackle box. You can angle them any way you want. And you can elevate them with the, with the pull extenders and angle them any way you want. Uh, you don't need it for this kayak because the live well is, or this, excuse me, this kayak well is so deep and wide. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside here. Plenty of storage for all the stuff you're going to grab right away. This doesn't come out. Everything you might need is in there, for a bass fisherman anyway. And then here, and these are all one hand operation here. Those are 3,700 boxes. And there's two different brands in there, but they're all 14 inches long. You could probably get two more in there 
or maybe one more in a, in a thinner one. These are the standard size. But uh, I went with four because that was all I needed. Then I have a small 360 series in here, which if you use these, which are 11 inches wide, you could probably put nine of them in here. But I just added one more. I got some soft plastic in there. Threw an extra bag down there, some weights, hooks, and more spinner baits in this bag than you could use in your whole life. Plenty of tackle in there. Like I said, you just do it all up with one hand. The seat is the new, newly designed seat, and all I can tell you is it's very comfortable. There's the bar does not hit you in the bottom of your your back or the bottom of your tailbone. Scupper plugs do not come with this model. They come with the Old Town Topwater, and they're, they give you a few one-way scupper plugs. What I found is, out is you don't need scupper plugs. Uh, any water that comes in there runs right back out. It never once made it past the soles of my shoes, even when I stepped in off a dock. And uh, it's dry seconds later because it runs right out this, this uh, polyethylene hull. I made a couple adjustments on the rudder control because this was a little bit too loose and this was a little bit too tight and it's very easy to do. I don't recommend that you do much adjusting on it. You shouldn't have to, but just make sure they're both even and that when you turn the adjustment with a small adjustable wrench, it doesn't uh, feel overly tight. This camera pole is for over the over the uh, shoulder uh, camera angle. That costs like two and a half bucks to make. It's half inch PVC into an inch and a quarter to half inch adapter, which slides right in here and does not move. You can, however, grab the pole and twist it and, and move it side to side, but it's not going to move on its own. And you can just simply pull this out like that put it back in like that and then adjust it and then off you go I uh, attached a magnet and an external power supply and this will last over five hours this one and I just have a, a small power cable zip tied to it and the battery that's in here will last the battery in the camera is probably last two hours Okay, so I think we've just about covered everything. I'm going to shoot some videos all year long. I'm not going to put a fish finder on it right away. Here in Nebraska, we have very tiny lakes. And I'm in the southeastern part in the Omaha, Nebraska, Council Bluffs, Iowa area. Most of the lakes around here are very small. Uh, the average depth of most of our lakes is only 9 foot. So it's a unique kind of fishing especially for bass and I'll be doing some videos and I'll, I'll go ahead and put them on my channel and I'll reevaluate this as we go along so I've already done a little slight repair on it because I didn't want to refuse it uh, the reason why I did not knew I didn't want to refuse it was one it, the damage wasn't that severe and two is because it took almost a year to get this kayak and they're still not available from Old Town you have to find somebody who's got them and buy them. From Bass Pro Shops, this was the same price as the Old Town price, which is uh, $21.99. The, uh, the Wilderness Systems Tackle Box was about $150, as was the Sea Tug. I got a discount on the NRS Life Jacket. That's an NRS jacket. And normally these are 110, but uh, from Austin it was 82 bucks. They were out of stock from NRS. And uh, what you're going to find out is a lot of things are out of stock, and that's going to go on for a while. So if you can get something from somebody else, you may as well just go ahead and get it instead of ordering it, trying to order it direct from Old Town and having it show up the way it's supposed to in plastic, cardboard, in plastic. This showed up in plastic only because. Bass Pro removed the cardboard, and that's probably why it got damaged. And one more thing. This is where I attach my flag. And it's just a little tiny carabiner. 
put it on, take it off. It won't damage anything down there because it's so light. Oh, and uh, when I was describing this kayak, I called the front portion of the, the hull, the skeg. This is actually the keel. I'm sorry I misspoke. And anyway, that's a, a very prominent keel that tapers back and then it picks up back here and it continues on down and as you can see on the bottom here you have a very very prominent keel that along with the rudder keeps this kayak tracking straight all the time for you so anyway that's about it youtubers this is midwest phil i'm going to be checking out here and uh i think i'll throw this in the back of my truck and go down the lake and Breaking the drive a little bit more. I'll see you on the channel. Bye-bye.